How's it going you guys and welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to share with you guys five common mistakes that I see a lot of gyms program when it comes to their affiliate programming. So I've personally been coaching for five years. I've been coaching at numerous different places. I think I've coached at five different gyms total. I've been doing programming for the past year and I've had my experience with you know uh, good months of programming and bad months of programming. I've seen it all happen in, my, in front of me. I've, I've followed those programs before in the past where it was just maybe it was just too much, it was too little, it was too weird, it was like, you know, the RX was too crazy. So we're gonna kind of break down those five common mistakes I see happen in a lot of different gyms to help make your gym's programming more effective, more fun, uh, keep it injury free, and just allow your gym to get better with uh, the programming because the main reason why your people, well, this is the, the three main things that I've uh, thought about very hardly about why members will go to your gym specifically. It's one, because of the coaches slash community. Those are a big part of it. Your coaches are, you know, are essentially breeding the community of your gym. So if you don't have coaches that you think are doing a good job of that, maybe have a chat with them, talk to them about that. Um, second is the programming. People are paying top dollar to program. If they wanted to, they could watch my videos and then go do their own thing at another gym for you know, only 50 bucks a month or whatever it may be, or start a home gym. So that's another big thing. And then third is your facility. How much equipment do you have? How clean it is? Things like that. So something to keep in mind, an like extra quick tip before we get started with the video. So. If you haven't seen it already, I recently just finished a video. It should be up already on the channel. It's the one before this. I recommend you watch where I give you guys the structure of how to build out a uh, you know, CrossFit program. This is a structure that I've found very useful and helpful. It makes, it makes it super easy to program months and months in advance if you wanted to. So if you struggle with programming, maybe program only a week's worth at a time, whatever it is, uh, check out the last video where I break everything down, give you guys a lot of detail on that. So going into the five mistakes, the first one is it's too constantly varied. People, or a lot of the gyms that I've seen, I'll follow online, or I, you know, whenever I hear a new gym or see a gym on Instagram, I always click on their website and I always go to their prices and their coach and their programming so just because that's kind of what I geek out on. It's what I want to learn about. I want to you know, grow my gym and learn from other gyms what they're doing right and wrong. And I've seen a lot of gyms with their program. They just program a lot of weird stuff too often. It's like there's no rhyme or reason to the programming and it literally looks like there's like pulling stuff from other programs like, oh, I saw, you know, Cross New England do this. I saw, you know, Cross and Mayhem do this. They're throwing it into the program with, you know, there's no intent behind that workout. It's just like they thought it looked cool, so they put it into the mix. Just because the workout looks cool doesn't mean anything. I have this battle with one of my coaches at my gym all the time and she's like, man, I want to do the class workout today. It looks so fun. It looks so cool. And I'm like, well, A, the, like, you're, you only, you only think it's cool because you're really good at those movements and you want to crush that workout and get one of the top scores. Um, but B, your skill workout's cool doesn't mean that it's going to be effective for you. I, what I think is cool is heavy deadlifts and handstand push-ups, but I rock those. What I hate is really long rowing and running and wall balls, so I need to stay away from what I think is just cool and go to the days that I think I need to really, you know, I can really improve on and get better at those days. Um, because this person I'm talking about does her own individualized programming, but the days that she wants, the days that she thinks are cool, the days that she would probably crush uh, and get the top score. So, another reason why I recommend going to check out the last video, talks about the purpose of a, a cycle, how to build out a cycle, why you should have one, how to do it step by step, and then create really fun, effective programming that way, but it's still gonna get your, you know, whatever your, your goal for your athletes uh, in that period of time is. Maybe it's time to get ready for the open. Maybe it's time where you just finished the open and you want to get them stronger. Maybe they just want to work on their aerobic uh, conditioning. Whatever it is, I ch recommend the last video a lot. Um, now, so that's the first thing. It's too constantly varied. There's no you know, purpose behind the programming. Uh, second is it's too high intensity. So a lot of the times, I see a lot of gyms program eight minute AMRAPs, 12 minute AMRAPs, and that's every single day and it's meant to crush their souls and your body can only take so much crushing before it literally becomes crushed and now you have you know, elbow tendonitis. Now you have a click going on your shoulder and you can't go overhead for a while because you have to focus on that. Maybe your knees are starting to get really wonky and achy. So a lot of those things aren't fun. We wanna stay away from them. But if we're going too heavy, or is it, if we're going, well, heavy can be a form of intensity. That makes it more challenging. If you're going too heavy, if you're going too short and fast, if it's just movements that are really putting people on their backs every single day, then it's probably too much. With my programming, I like to program at least one longer conditioning piece, anywhere from like 25 plus minutes 
um, of a workout once a week. Maybe I'll program around a 20 minute and then I'll program maybe some short ones, but short ones that aren't super crazy. I won't program a, a six minute AMRAP and have it have 205 cleans or people have to sprint. I maybe might program a short minute AMRAP and it might be double unders and pull ups. So it's a little less dynamic, a little lower impact, and it'll save more uh, of their joints and things like that based off of where it is on that week of the programming. So uh, don't be afraid that one day a week you program something that's 20 or 30 minutes long and it doesn't put people on their back but they're definitely super sweaty afterwards, they're huffing and puffing. Maybe you don't be afraid to th throw bodybuilding type movements. I love to throw bench press, um, you know, single leg movements. I like to throw in lunges. I like to throw in um, stuff like bear crawls, things that are really slow, put a lot of time and attention on your muscles and then really gonna tax them without doing a lot of dynamic, heavy, uh, impact stuff like that. So something to keep in mind. Trust me, your athletes' bodies will thank you. They might not be up to it. The the big the hardest challenge for me when I took over the programming was not having a barbell every single day for the athletes because they craved it. They wanted it so bad. If I programmed a dumbbell workout, I programmed something that didn't have a barbell or dumbbell at all. They had to have a couple members that want to go do open gym, do their own thing, and throw a barbell in the mix. But after a while, they slowly got the idea. I explained to them, hey, not every day we need a barbell. We can do unilateral stuff with dumbbells. We can still get a great workout in. You're still going to get your butt kicked, and it's just going to only help you out with your barbell stuff down the road. People got really you know, accepting of it, and then now people love it, and they're still getting their butts kicked. Don't you worry about that. Number three is not enough variety of movement. So I see a lot of gyms that will program a lot of double unders, a lot of cleans, a lot of thrusters, a lot of pull ups. Next week, double unders, cleans, and thrusters, and pull ups. Add as much variety to the programming as you can to make it fun, interesting, exciting for members. That's what they originally signed up for. They signed up for the constantly varied aspect of it because it looked, every day looked different, even though there was a cycle behind it or a purpose behind it. Um, we still want to keep it fun and exciting. Throw in Farmer carries. I love doing carries my athletes. It kicks their butts every time. I love doing unilateral movements with dumbbells. I like finding new movements online. If you don't already follow Marcus Hill on Instagram, he posts a ton of different movements uh, every single day. And it's find new things that are still gonna, you know, work on our pressing, still work on our pulling, still work on our gymnastics, still work on barbell movements, but that aren't the same. People don't, if I recommend having your athletes clean once a week, snatch once a week, uh, do a heavy pull once a week, do a light pull, uh, you know, press once a week, whatever it is, have some kind of like, uh, you know, consistent pattern with your programming that way, but keep the, the, the how they get that stimulus different. That's what makes it really fun. Um, I'm trying to think of some new moves I've thrown in recently. We've done a lot of like, uh, dumbbell front rack carries we did those last week where it sounds simple because they don't really hear it when you have your arms to your side taxes your forms a lot we had it here still tax the forearms then we and paired it up with dumbbell burpees if you haven't looked those look those up those are fun too and kick people's butts uh, that was a great day find different movements keep things fun exciting keep it constantly varied to an extent um, and then have people fun, or if you have people excited to come to your gym every day, because that's a fun new thing that they get to play with and learn. Because just, you, just if you, if you, you blah, blah, blah. if your gym only has barbells and kettlebells and dumbbells and a couple rowers, you could program a million different workouts if you really look up, spend the time looking up these movements and trying to be creative with it. Sometimes I'll literally just be sitting at the computer writing up programming and I'll think of what if, what if instead of we doing normal form of carries, we bring it to the front rack. What if instead of doing the power cleans, say we do dumbbell power cleans, we do kettlebell cleans, or we do Turkish get-ups in a workout. When was the last time your gym programmed Turkish get-ups? A lot of gyms don't do them. They are an incredible movement, build core strength, stability, you know, a lot of different benefits from it. So keep it fun, keep it exciting, keep it fresh. Uh, that's gonna help keep your uh, members happy and wanting to come back for more and hungry for more. Number four is explain the purpose behind each workout. So it does not matter how elaborate, how you know, down to the to the T you've made your workout and you think this is the best program in my life, it's gonna get so fit from this and be fantastic. But then you say, but then you don't really explain why the, what the purpose behind that workout is, why they're doing that workout. And they look at the workout and they see, okay, so it's got deadlifts at 185 in it. My deadlift's at 225 and it's a lot of reps, but I can RX it, so I will go ahead and RX it. But maybe the purpose of the workout is it's supposed to be 185 for the gen pop 
isn't that heavy for guys, which would be 135 for ladies, which isn't too heavy for a lot of ladies. Um, but if, that, if that's close to that person's max and they're trying to RX the workout and they just get destroyed, then it defeated the purpose. Maybe the workout was to go fast, should be light, you should get a good you know, hamstring and glute pump, but nothing to really slow you down. So explain that to your members, why we are doing this, what you're supposed to get out of it, how it's gonna help you down the road. Well, you know, tomorrow, maybe you say, hey guys, tomorrow we're doing, uh, we're doing thrusters, so you don't want to fry your backside and your butt now because if you do that, then tomorrow's thrusters are going to be really, really gross. So pick a lightweight, maybe a weight you can go and broken with or get things done in two sets. Every single workout that I post on uh, Wattify at our gym, I always include the focus underneath it where I, in the comments I write, hey guys, today I want you to go on broken. If you need to rest, rest in between the movements as you go from a movement to the next. Maybe there's a run, use that run as rest. Don't go out there and crush yourself on the run or maybe vice versa. Hey, I want you to sprint on that run every time. Every time you get back in the gym, just go slow and steady and try to catch your breath for the next run. Explain to them why they're doing what they're doing and then that'll help them get more out of the programming and not be as destroyed come Thursday and Friday. You want, if you, I mean, from a business perspective, you want your members in your gym every single day and if you're crushing them and they come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and they're gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday and they're not really seeing results now because they're not really consistent with the gym, they're more likely to leave. If you want your members there every single day, make it to where they can come every single day because their body is able to do that. Um, something I also talk about a little bit in the last video. If you haven't, if you haven't watched it already, pause this right now and go watch the last video. What's wrong with you? Anyways, um, now that you're back, hello, welcome back. Number five, programming for the fire breathers. Uh, I had this problem probably a few years ago when I first started CrossFit. I was very competitive and I was like, I want to do muscle ups and handstand push ups and heavy snatches and all these movements that the, your gen pop don't really care to do. I was thinking about this the other day and I was, and if, if I walked into my members and I asked them, would you want a muscle up? 99% of your members are gonna say, yeah, I would love to have a muscle up. If you get, but how many of them are actually gonna put in the work to do muscle? How many of them are actually gonna, uh, maybe maybe they need to lose a few pounds, make themselves lighter for gymnastics, maybe they need to work more on pulling them exercise, maybe they need to follow another program to get them to do their first strict pull up, to get them to even start working towards muscle ups. If we're just programming for the, the upper echelon of your gym, the, the, you know, the, the small 5% of the gym that um, is really athletic and they love CrossFit and they do it every single day because they can, that, that you're missing out on the majority of your athletes. One thing I like to do is I like to program a level two and a level one, level two being essentially the RX, level one being more so, I, I'm gonna try to refrain myself from saying this more so in the future, but I was calling it the scaled version, now I'm gonna call it the fitness version. Some people come to CrossFit because they like the constant varied fitness, they like the high intensity part of it, but they don't really care to do snatches, they don't care to do muscle ups, they don't care to do a lot of these things. Um, if I recommend listening to Bed Bergeron's podcast, it talks a lot about these kind of stuff and it will make your gym that much better. But you, you need to program for the general population and then you can program up for everyone else as well. It's much easier to program a very simple workout, simple in the sense of maybe it does have snatches, maybe it does have muscle ups every now and then, but for the most part, it's a workout that a lot of your members can do, and then from there, modify up. Rx plus today, muscle ups instead of pull ups. Rx plus today, squat snatches instead of power snatches. Things like that, very simple way to, you know, get to the, the small people, the small uh, population as well, but you're still feeding and helping out the, the larger population of your gym as well. That being said, I also do a level three. So essentially, I'll, some days I'll do level three where I'll post three different levels of a workout, level three being RX+, plus, level two being RX, and level one being the, the fitness version. So something to consider, it doesn't really take much extra time at all because literally I'll look at a, a workout. Let's pick a workout like Diane. Diane is 21, or 225 power clean, or two, me, 225 deadlifts for guys, 155 deadlifts for ladies, and it goes 259 deadlifts and handstand push-ups. I put that up on the board, that's level two. Level one is a lighter deadlift and hand release push-ups. Level three, if I wanted to do a level three for some people, it would be a 255 deadlift for guys, a 265, 75 deadlift for girls, and then maybe a small deficit on the handstand push-ups. Maybe I have them do strict handstand push-ups. It's super simple to tweak the program as much as you can. So build it more towards the general population of your gym. It'll be much easier to cater to everyone else from there versus just building out super crazy programming that might scare away a lot of the people that don't care to be competitive. I Right now, think how many members do you have at your gym? 100, 200, 300? How many of them are competitive that would sign up for a competition tomorrow if they saw it posted? Five of them, 10 of them, maybe 30 if your gym is you know more towards the competitive side, but 
A lot of people don't do that, so they don't want that. So you don't need to build them up to do workouts that are gonna, like for an athlete, have them just be fit, healthy, burn some fat, look good naked, that's what a lot of people wanna do. So implement, if, any, if you're making any of these mistakes now, implement those fixes immediately, and I promise you, your gym's gonna be much better off, you're gonna have a much better member retention, you're gonna have more people coming into your gym for the programming. It's out of all the gyms that I've gone to, these are the five mistakes I've seen routinely, and if you avoid these, you're gonna be doing much better uh, with your affiliate. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments regarding uh, programming or anything like that, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. I still have a few more videos I want to uh, make about programming kind of in a little more detail with like sets and reps and building out workouts and things like that. But that'll be later down the road if you guys are interested in that. So if you are, let me know in the comments. If you're not already, subscribe to our channel. We post a ton of videos on here to help you guys become better athletes, coaches, uh, just learn as much about fitness health as possible as I'm learning as much as I can. Um, if you're not already, follow us on Instagram at Constant Very Fitness. Post a bunch of dope memes on there. At least I think they're dope. I think they're funny. I laugh, so hopefully you'll laugh too. Thanks guys, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.